Hello, let us talk about the rectilinear motion of particles. In this chapter, the first thing you have to remember is that we can derive the acceleration from the velocity from the position. But what we care about is that this is be representing by, represented by a function that has um, its origin in a coordinate system that is rectilinear or a Cartesian coordinate system also called a rectangular coordinate system. So, for instance, if we have the distance and um, in this case, what we need to know is that it's going to be a function of time and x is going to be in either meters or feet or miles. Time is going to be in seconds, milliseconds, microseconds but it's only one variable. We're not gonna have x and y and z. No, we're gonna have a first only one variable. So on the horizontal axis, we're gonna have the change in time. In the vertical axis, we're gonna have the change in distance. This could be either x, or if, you give, if they give you y of t, then obviously it's gonna be y. Okay, but we're gonna start with probably x, because the function that they're gonna give you is gonna have as an independent variable the time. The time is going to pass and then given the time we can know where our position in space is. Now remember that we can find this is position. Now we can find the velocity by finding the derivative this is the same as the x dt and this is velocity. And then you can have the acceleration, which is x double dot, which is equal to d x, well, actually, which is equal to the derivative of the second derivative of the function with respect to time. And this is acceleration. So if, if, for instance, a or x dot dot is equal to zero, then you can have a system where you have a velocity and, of course, the position is changing within time. So that's to say that if they give you a system that behaves in a nonlinear fashion, this is a rectilinear system because it does not mean that has to be a straight line. It, mean, it means that we're talking about rectilinear coordinate system or is not rotating. The, the frame is not rotating. The coordinate frame is fixed, not rotated. It's an inertial coordinate system we'll talk about later. So um, here, with changes in time, you can have changes in direction or position better. As such. So they can give you a table with times and position space or they can give you the function and then you evaluate the function and get that um, position space. So for example, if the simplest case is that a particle is moving one meter at each point in space, then you can find the velocity by taking into consideration what amount of time that takes. So that's another concept that we're going to talk about. If this position is in meters, then doing the derivative will get us meters and change in time, so meters in second. In general, this is actually change in length because this could be fit or this could be this could be 10 feet or this could be 10 inches or 10 meters and the change in time. So it's length over time versus here is the position is the change of length over time divided by the change in time. So length over time squared. 
okay so usually that would be meters per second squared or feet per second square etc so this is the unit of acceleration all right so there's a concept that is very important for practical purposes which is average velocity and we'll see that in a minute here because if the velocity is changing so let's say this function is equal to 2 um, t cubic plus 5 t this is a function of t then dx dt x is a function of t is equal to 6 t2 plus 5 so obviously at each time you're gonna have an is not a linear acceleration meaning take that as a function one f1 now let's take for example we'll come back to average velocity in a minute let's take a particle that has um it's a function to a particle that has x1 a function to that is equal to t squared plus 5. so dx dt for this function the velocity is 2t plus 0 okay so what it means is that if you plot that in this let's give it values so we're gonna have to do time function 1 function 2 so at time 0 function 1 is 0 plus 0 0 function 2 is 5 right a time 1 second this is 2 plus 5 is 7 and this is 1 plus 5 6 a time 2 this is 8 times 2 16 plus 10 26 and this is x2 is 4 plus 5 is um, 9 All right so this is the, the table for position and you can do more values if you want all right now let's do velocity If you do velocity let's do something similar t 0 f1 dot f2 dot or actually dx1 dt dx2 dt okay so at 0 we have 0 plus 5 is 5 so it has an initial so we already have an initial velocity of 5 meters per second if that's in meters per second and this is zero and five okay perfect so they start from the same point at time one say one second we have six plus five which is eleven and here we have oh my bad so let's go back i'm not we're focusing on this function now and on this function now okay so at time one we have five sorry at time zero we had five and for the second function we have zero for time one we have six plus five eleven and here we have two and for time two we have four times six six times four is twenty four plus 5 is 29 and then 2 times 2 is 4 so you can see how this is going to be 2 4 6 8 right all right 
So let's plot this. For position, we're going to have time and distance. So 10, 20, 30, and 1, 2, 3. Okay. Um, let's see, this is in seconds. All right, so we have that at zero. We have here, let's say this is going to be F1, and this is going to be F2. So for F1, black, it's going to be at zero, is zero. At one second, we have seven. At two seconds, we have 26. All right. And actually, I don't know if it's, yeah, probably like that. Okay. And then blue is F2. At time zero, we have five. At time one, we have six. And at time two, we have nine. So it's obviously increasing much slower. All right. Let's do the same thing for the velocity. This is for position. Okay, x, x, x of t and x of t. This is position. So at time zero, this had a, a different position than origin. Say they give, you know, this is a race and they gave him five meters ahead. So because this second system, this first system was so fast, they gave the second system five meters in advance, and even then they were just smoked because it's too slow. But let's see for the velocity. So we have time, and we have dx dt. So zero, one, two, three, and then we have 10, 20, 30. Okay. So at time zero, and let's do this is dx1 dt, and then red one is dx2 dt. Okay, so at time, this one is dx dt, the black one. At time zero, we have our initial velocity of five. Okay, five. At time one, he had velocity of 11. And at time two, uh, velocity of 29. So like this. <clears throat> okay. So this, if you want to see how this is, this is working, so uh, the starting line, the starting line, the starting line was say here, and you they they were running for I don't know 30 meters. Let's see, yeah, this is the maximum distance, 26 meters. From zero meters to 26 meters was a race. When they started the race, this system was not static, was not at velocity equal zero. They started the race, but this guy was already moving at five meters per second. So they started the race and this system had an initial velocity of five meters per second. Okay. But let's see the second one. The second one, they gave him five meters in advance, but started from rest, started at zero. So at red, so we have at zero, zero. At one, we had two. At two, we had four. And this is gonna be a straight line. All right, so this is this one as well. So you can see how this system, which is a small parabola, 
So very, yeah, because if you look at the function in here, yeah, this is a small parabola con respect with, with uh, this one. This one is a small parabola, this one is a sharp curve. But the acceleration of the second system is linear. All these systems are rectilinear in the sense that they are rectangular coordinates and they are changing only one variable with time. All right, so follow that example and then we'll go back to uh, more examples after a few more concepts. So the average velocity, is, as I mentioned, is very important because if you notice this curve, they have different velocities. At this under time one, this system had a velocity of 11 meters per second, and at time two, a velocity of 29 meters per second, because they're accelerating. And if you wanted to know what the acceleration was, you just have to derive this first uh, function again. So if you derive it, there will be 12t, and that's the acceleration. Okay. Um, so the average velocity is a very useful concept because instead of having to say the velocity at each time, you can say, well, the initial velocity was 5 and the last recorded velocity was 29. All right, so my velocity, average velocity, which is actually not x but v bar, is the difference between 29 and 5 in the time that it took, that it was 2 minus, minus 0. So this is 24 divided by 2. This one is 12 meters per second. So the average velocity is the amount, is, yeah, it's just the average of all the velocities in the system. So if you go from San Antonio to Austin, and sometimes you're going at 50 miles per hour, and sometimes you're going at 60 miles per hour, and sometimes you're going at 70 miles per hour, at the end, even the car will give you an average of fuel consumption. And that is pretty important in most cases. But if you want to know the instantaneous velocity is, is the continuous velocity because it's the derivative of space, of the position, I mean. All right, so that concept is quite important, but you have to understand when they're talking about average velocity and instantaneous velocity. So let's look at this example. They're telling us that there's a particle with a position. This is exactly what we just did, but the functions are different. So the position is xt squared minus cubic t. So let's see. x is 60 squared minus t cubic. And obviously this is a function of time. So x is a function of time. And this is the position that they're giving us. So uh, we can obtain the velocity. Yes, this is very simple. So to obtain the velocity is, we just did this, but get familiar with the concept, derive with respect to time. You, you should know how to do the derivative. This is 12t minus 3t squared. Okay, so this is my velocity. And then we can obtain the, the acceleration by deriving this guy. So the second derivative of space with respect to time is what what's the derivative of this guy is 12 minus 6 t okay so this is the position this is the velocity and this is the acceleration so it's, i'm gonna make things easier for everybody so that if if they ask you to plot it, you should be able to go to Wolfram Alpha and plot your system. So X, so go to WolframAlpha.com and you'll see that if you plot just as you can, the same way that you read, you can plot, you can write it. Okay. So this function is 60 squared minus t cubic. So we can do the 
this guy right here and plot it. All right, so our position is going to be this. Let's move it over here. And then if we do the derivative of this is very simple. We just do derivative is d of this function with respect to time. So this is the, this is twelve t minus three t squared. Yeah, that is correct. And then you can do this for your homeworks and you can do this for your exams because it's just plotting the curve. And then if we do second derivative. Is going to be six so it's twelve and then yep that is correct all right okay so what we have is this guy right here is position this guy right here is velocity and this guy right here is acceleration so as you can see the position is changing non-linearly so for instance the, this is if you start from downtown San Antonio and they ask you to go to Houston in a straight line this is why it's rectilinear. Then you're covering, and this is miles, I don't know. You're covering 10 miles in, well, what is that? In 1.5 seconds, that is pretty fast. So maybe you're flying an airplane or a helicopter, but look, it's, it's not, you're not covering the distance at the same rate. Okay, that's what I wanted you to know. And then at 4.5, 4.3 seconds, and you're after um, going over 30 miles, you for, you, you're forgetting something and you have to return to your initial point. And it takes 1.5 seconds to go back because you're even going faster. Okay, so you go back. Um, to your initial point. All right. So let's see if that's true, if you're going faster or not. Because the way I read this is that you start from zero and then at 4.5 seconds you are at 30 miles in, you just away. This is the distance. And then you, reach, you come out, turn around and at six seconds you go exactly the same point that you're you were at. So you go, and then you come back. But the velocity curve tells us that you start increasing the velocity and then you decrease velocity. Oh, okay, so actually this is more like a spring when you're stretching and compressing. You're gaining velocity and then you're losing velocity on the way back like a like a damping system okay so you see how that is at two seconds or close to two seconds you reach your maximum velocity but because of the inertia of the system you kept going and is when you are already coming back that you're um, returning to your initial position so you can see how each function has a unique story and these functions are crucial 
for satellites, for airspace, for everything. So you really want to know your velocity and your position. Say if you're controlling the space, the you know con space control in a foreign airport, so that having this trait could save lives or could be pr pretty dangerous. Now the acceleration. Oh, interesting. The acceleration is a non-linear. It's a linear curve with negative slope. So even though your velocity was increasing first, because this is velocity, remember, dx dt, your velocity was increasing, and then at, at two seconds, where's two seconds? At two seconds from zero to at two seconds, yeah, you go to negative velocity. So your acceleration is positive, and then your acceleration is negative. So you're basically losing acceleration, and then you start to decrease acceleration. So you start to rapidly decrease, hitting the brakes. So at one second, that's yeah, that's why you're hitting a maximum here. Because at one second, you're starting to lose more and more acceleration. And then at zero, sorry, that's two seconds, you're at zero acceleration. So your velocity is a maximum. You have to remember the loss of, of derivatives. And then you start going in the negative velocity because now your acceleration is negative. Now, what does positive and negative mean? So positive acceleration means from your coordinate system you're going to the right hand side okay from your, your particle is going to the right hand side negative acceleration means that from your coordinate system you're going back you're going left it's like remember acceleration is a force and mass times acceleration is a force so this has a direction now negative slope means losing acceleration. Positive slope means gaining acceleration. So if you're accelerating to go faster, you're gonna have a positive slope. Slope. If you're using the brakes, if you're hitting the brakes and losing acceleration, then you have a negative slope. But if you're negative and then if you have a neg if you were passing the zero threshold okay this is the point that i need you to understand if you're in negative acceleration speak now this is because of direction in other words you can go a positive slope with negative you can have a positive slope with negative accelerations because what this means is that not only you're gaining velocity, but, but you're going in the left-hand side of your coordinate system. If you have a coordinate system where this is positive and up is positive. Okay, so this is X and Y. Forget time for a minute here. This is X and Y, a two-dimensional system. If you have a negative acceleration with a positive slope, then you're gaining velocity, but your system has forces going towards the negative side of your forces. Okay? In other words, this is the planet Earth. You decide that this is the origin. Whatever goes to the right is positive. Whatever goes to the left is positive. This is the Sun, and this is Mars. While you're, while you're, saying, with a while you're saying with a positive slope, in the fourth quadrant, remember, one, two three, fourth quadrant. A posi positive slope in the fourth quadrant means that you are accelerating, gaining velocity, but going towards Mars. A positive slope in the first quadrant means you're gaining velocity, going towards the Sun. 